so I'm back this won't be too many videos it possibly won't be a part three and like I say the link will be in the description what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip through a lot of this these are just uh, Etruscan um, and Roman how can I say um, style buildings symbols and things of that nature Brazilian pioneers or Romans too in that they were opposed to the Spanish settlers the pioneers the story goes conquered Brazil from the Spaniards who were legally entitled to a huge area of the west of Tordesillas line Spaniards and their cultivated lifestyle were dismissed as effeminate of course their cities dominated by the tidiness of a checkered streetscape they were assimilated by decadent Greeks subdued by rustic Romans the Bandierentes. This reconstruction of the colonial opposition between Portuguese and Spanish in the South America was directly related to Brazilian Republican opposition to Argentina. The prototypical effeminate Greek, as opposed to the male Roman Bandierente, whilst Roman values used during the Brazilian Empire were aristocratic and restricted to a limited number to court members. The new ideology had the potential to become popular as it did early on. Material culture played a crucial role in this spread through the invention of a new iconography. So I'm going to keep going and I suggest you go ahead and read this for yourself. The scholarly study of Roman antiquities in Brazil and colonized discourse. The scholarly study of Roman archaeology in Brazil is very recent. Although Latin has been studied for centuries, the study of Roman history is a late development. Carried out only after the introduction of university life in Brazil in the 1930s. Archaeology developed in Brazil later on, starting in the 1960s. Wow. Wow. Archaeology suffered particularly under the dictatorship between 1964 and 1985, even if classical archaeology considered apolitical or overtly reactionary, was not targeted by the military, was not targeted by the military. Excuse me. The archaeology of the Roman world was developed first as a way of studying archaeological collections stored in the National Museum of January River. Rio de Janeiro and the Archaeological and Ethnological Museum as well as in other institutions as the Sao Paulo Museum of Art. The Archaeological and Ethnological Museum include the second largest Roman collection in the country. Established from the 1960s and comprising a new focus on everyday artifacts such as amphorae. If you go and check out my other videos on Romans in Brazil you'll, you'll find out what amphorae is. It is old um, Pottery, should I say. The need for a study of archaeological collections led to a closer contact by local Roman archaeologists with their European counterparts since the 1980s. Brazilian Roman, Brazilian Roman archaeologists have been working with the European research centers, particularly with the British, Spanish, and Italian, but also French and Portuguese. Brazilians have been excavating Roman sites Garafone, Cavaccioli, Silva. Okay. Studying Roman collections in the European museums and most notably producing books and articles published in Europe and foreign languages such as English. 
scholarly Roman archaeology is not directly linked to the Roman M M images okay, excuse me, used by the imperial or Roman ideologues, but it cannot escape the overall context of Romans as models for Brazilians. Wow. As reaction, Roman archaeologists are sometimes more accurately aware of the ideological uses of the material culture than other archaeologists. In Brazil and that's why well, it is probably no coincidence that the post-processualism came first to be introduced in Brazil in Roman archaeology, archaeology and that Roman archaeologists were also interested in such subjects as telling children about Brazilian prehistory. Roman archaeology is not enough to dismantle invented images about Brazilians, but it can contribute to challenging colonized perceptions of identity as the case of the Pompeian archaeology attest. All right. Pompeii, Rome, and Brazil. Pompeii is a widely known and studied archaeological site up to the point in the epistemological issues of the discipline have been framed using it, as in the famous Pompeii premise formulated by Louis Benford to discredit Schiffer's behaviorist approach. The ancient Roman city was destroyed by the eruption of a Vesuvius in AD 79, preserving, that's around the same time Jerusalem was sacked, preserving streets, walls, artifacts, paintings, and inscriptions, even though most of the upper floors were destroyed. And I wish just you go and check out the movie Pompeii. I didn't check it out yet, but I will actually. I have a list of movies I have to check out. The ancient city was discovered in the mid-18th century. Diggings started early on, continuing until the present day. The early excavations were not concerned with the layers or detailed descriptions of the more humble findings. But in recent years, there has been a growing concern with all those aspects, including ordinary scribbles, gender and sexuality, power relations, and colonialism. To mention just a few, uh, let me see. For a recent overview of those issues by Brazilian C. Cav Caviccioli, uh, Fiatosa, and Funari, and Garafoni. Brazilian scholars have been at the forefront of this archaeological revision and close contact with those archaeologists and scholars promoting a progressive understanding of the uses of past of the past of past, such as Silberman, Little, Lowenthal, Claire, but also Hingley, the late Professor Oko, and, and a plethora of other leading promoters of a critical and political approach to the to the discipline. We focus on just a few aspects of the Pompeian archaeology as interpreted by Brazilians and in relation to relevant social issues in the past. Ordinary people, diversity, gender, relations, and sexuality, all these issues are related to the contemporary concerns in Brazil and beyond. The search for ordinary people and popular culture at Pompeii, as explored early on by one of us, used the archaeological evidence from the ancient Roman city to argue that subaltern voices should be heard. So that I don't actually know that word, but uh, I see the root word of sub and alter. So let me keep going. Brazil was leaving a dictatorship 1964-1985. A democratic constitution was enacted in 1988, and there was a huge demand for a different understanding of the past and of the present. Graffiti from, Pom graffiti from Pompeii were studied as to demonstrate that the subaltern were able to produce original culture features, cultural features, such as iconic poems, social criticism, female feelings, among other subjects. By no coincidence, those were hot issues in Brazil and beyond at that precise moment. Ordinary people were entitled to vote. Women were gaining social position and criticism. Okay, excuse me. Criticism was accepted as a necessary feature of social life. A social union leader, Luda, a semi-literate, was started to exploit freedom to show that ordinary people had their own ideas, and Pompeian graffiti was used to argue that vulgar Latin was a legitimate cultural feature 
as Lula's broken Portuguese, an example of the language of the masses. A poem by a Pompeian woman was published just as a woman from the Workers' Party. Lula's was elected as a major of the largest city in the country. Sao Paulo elected in 1988. The graffiti was small in size and scratched inside or outside the house, the house's walls. The reader was... The reader was in, invited to come close to the walls, read them, and he, she could answer or modify the graffiti. These inscriptions can be described as short, immediate, and emotionally charged. They are evidence of a personal impulse and impress common people's anxieties and feelings. Graffiti dealt with madness. Okay. I understand. Self-identity. I understand that. Criticism of authorities. And most notably, a critical view of... Of belief in deities by a woman. I wonder what this game banging in. Let me see. I deny all the gods. You will win. You will. Pentor. Pentor Ghana. Tall Apollo sings with his Cythera, but I am a mere female flute player, like a giraffe and Achilles shining with brightness. Okay. So this is some of the erotic Pompeii painting, which I, I would suggest you go and look up the images of uh, Russian Icono. Uh, basically, go to the search engine of Yahoo and type in Roman Iconoclast, and you will actually see catacombs, or you could also look up the catacombs of Rome, showing you some of these same style paintings. I am angry. The medicine is volcano. We will not enter into a discussion of all the philological and okay. I might skip through some of this. This may not be as potent as it would be to anyone else as me reading it, but if you read the whole thing, okay, I might finish that. Okay, I'm going to finish this up. We will not enter into a discussion of all the philological intricacies of this inscription, except to emphasize the fact that it was written by a woman with poor command of learned Latin. Nevertheless, she challenges the existence of gods, ridicules Achilles, and compares herself a simple flute player. So I'm guessing she called, I don't know if she called herself a snake charmer. I don't know. With the god Achilles, or uh, Coco Pelli, if you know about Coco Pelli. With the gods Achilles, angry with all those who proposed as a solution, a revolution, as a solution, a revolution. It is by no mean coincidence that this ancient Pompeian graffito, it was crazy. Oh, man. Wow. Let me continue. Graffito is produced even in recent Brazilian photo logs. Democracy fostered a key concept of diversity. Again, the main features associated to the Brazilian study of Pompeii have been sexual. So if you don't know what the other nations came and did to Brazil, they even got to a point where the, the South American women were swallowing their jewels and the people were cutting them out of them. But let me continue. The erotic paintings have provided, in, in provided material for many publications on aspects often considered taboo and have challenged normative and interpretives about sexuality in the ancient world. The amount of erotic or sexually related painting found in several rooms of houses, so I'm, they might have made them into whorehouses. Like, these people, you gotta read, you gotta be able to read the fine print of some of this stuff. According to Marina, Gaviacholi's research had provided a different view of the role of women in the sexual act up until then described in the historial 
historiography as submissive to the male desires. Furthermore, sexuality has been considered a relationship with religiosity, attaching the sexual act to the idea of fertility and good fortune. So we all know about the Catholic Church. All right. In this context, several Brazilian scholars such as Cavicioli, Fiat, Fiatosas, Funari, and Garafoni have produced alternative interpretations attaching archaeological theory to the analysis of the paintings, as well as their intersection with the academic debates about genre and sexuality in the present worldwide and in Brazil. Oh, excuse me, I gotta get some water. Right, um, attaching that. Okay, I'm gonna start back here. Let's see what painting is that. I'm gonna just start because it's a long one hour sentence. In this context, several Brazilian scholars such as Cavicioli, Fiatosa, Funari, and Garofoni have produced alternative interpretations attaching archaeological theory to the analysis of the paintings as well as, well as their intersection with the academic debates about genre and sexuality in the present worldwide in Brazil. By exploring these interdisciplinary areas, researchers of those topics have been seeking to build more dynamic interpretive models of the Roman society by considering their particularities and conflicts, which are very seldom em emphasized by more traditional discourses. Identity issues were also dealt with in particular in relation to outcasts such as gladiators, Graffiti by Pompeian ordinary people often depict gladiatorial fight. This is in Brazil, brothers and sisters. You, all right. Mostly emphasizing the fighter's strength and showmanship, such as notably in a famous graffito. And I would suggest you check out the word uh, reefer, which is grifo. And, um, oh, man. I'm going to bring out a little bit more on this, but. At the moment, I got a few other things that I said I was going to bring out in the past that I'm actually bringing out to fruition now. Where gladiator, where gladiator receives the palm representing victory. In modern times, the gladiator is seldom represented as praiseworthy. Though recently Diego Maradona, the Argentine footballer, referred to the late President Kirchner as a gladiator. Again, contemporary social issues are at the root of the interest in personal lives of gladiators, and archaeology played a role not only in highlighting ancient Romans in the arena, but present day outcasts, or in the case of Kirchner, perceived or supposed outcasts. So, okay, this is not going to be a 20 minute video. In this sense, post-colonial criticism, actually it will be a little bit over. In this sense, post-colonial criticisms have encouraged Brazilian scholars to think of other ways to study the Roman world from a dialogue with the European scholars who seek a less static interpretation of the Roman world. Some Brazilian scholars have been noticing that archaeology permits the capturing of particular aspects of the past and the construction of theoretical and less excluding models such Political position is fundamental not only to challenge traditional academic approaches and modern reception of Roman past based Roman past based upon power and excluded forms of national identities, but also to think of other forms of sensibilities and worldviews. From this perspective, a new agenda within the Brazilian academic environment has opened up other possibilities of production of knowledge and social reflection. So this is the recluding, re concluding remarks. Mm. There will be a third video. I'm going to read the concluding remarks. And I'm guessing it's a summary or a sum of thoughts about this whole information. But I will suggest you go and check out a show called um, Spartacus. I would suggest you go and check out a show called Spartacus. 
Um, I brought out information about the gypsies. I erased it. But the gypsies play a big part in this also. There are gypsy, gypsy influence or the other way around in certain South American countries and on the islands. There are, I believe, one million gypsies in South America. From the information I brought out. Flamenco is a gypsy dance. It, I'm going to try to resum and bring out a lot of that gypsy, gypsy information. But I'm going to come back and give you the concluding remarks. Hopefully this information was not only fruitful, but potent or protein. But yeah, out.